Before we continue with the video, if you like what I'm doing here on this channel, please consider subscribing. It helps the channel a lot. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Welcome back to my Create an RPG series. In this episode, we will be enhancing our status effect system and really making it come alive to be something really functional and have a lot of depth available to it. So we will be doing that by actually enhancing our blueprint uh, class that we created but didn't put much effort into before. So let's go back to our status effect um, folder. We open up our blueprint for status effect. In here we will remove the tick and the actor begin overlap. And so what we will be doing here is why was there an actor begin overlap there? Anyway, never mind. Uh, so what we have created so far, we have an attempt application here. And what we want to do here is essentially, we want to have a few different uh, pieces of code that are run uh, at different points of the existence of the status effect. I'm actually going to, yeah, I think it will be more easily be, yeah, it will be easier to see if we do it like this. I'm going to be removing this attempt application over here, compiling or saving, going back to our uh, blueprint component for the status effect, which does now uh, is not able to uh, call that function. We'll remove that function call for now. Going back to our blueprint again, we're going to be making an event. Uh, let's create a custom event and let's call that attempt application. This way it will be much easier to follow as well, I think. So we'll go back, uh, we'll need to make sure to compile first. Then we go to our component again and we'll say uh, attempt application. And we have now fixed the damage that we just created. Moving from here, we're going to have this attempt application uh, this is where we will be starting. We will be trying to add a status effect to someone. However, that might fail because of different reasons, but this is where that is determined. After we have determined that everything is fine, we're going to be calling a different event here. So let's create a new event called custom event. We'll call this one um, start status effect. So this one will be like the core of when a status effect is actually happening. So let's call on that here, start status effect. And the reason we're doing this is also to allow for uh, children to be made uh, of this class to allow you to easily like hook into either overwrite how some piece of an event is called or add some functionality in the end or replace it completely or whatever you want and allow you to have a lot of flexibility with different children's and uh, status effects that you create from this base class. Anyway, uh, from here, what we want to do, we have a few different things that are um, relating to the status effect, but we don't have any data to work with inside of it. So what we want to do first is we'll create a variable. We will call this status effect uh, info. And we will make it of the type S status effect that we created earlier. Now we want to both instance editable this and expose it on spawn. And the reason for this is if we go back to our third person character is that if we refresh this spawn actor, uh, there we go you'll see that we now have a status effect info here, which means that we may have a class that has a certain amount of properties. Let's say we have a poison effect that lasts for three seconds and does damage every one second. But here we want to have a poison effect, but we want to have slightly different stats. Then we can actually just overwrite that with a status effect here saying that instead of this, it should be ticking every 0 0.5 seconds or something like that. So you have the ability to make it even more dynamic when you're spawning it in if you want to have some kind of leveling effect or strength effect to it that where you could like be a more potent version of the one that you would normally spawn for example so that's the purpose of that going back to our class again we now have this status effect info which we can start doing something with 
So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to drag it out and from it we want to break. That way we get all of its components. And we have all of these different variables available to us now. We know for one thing we have something called a periodic time here. The periodic time is what's supposed to happen within certain intervals within this uh, status effect. So a good way to handle this is to create a, a timer by event where we say that the, the time between each of these is going to be the periodic time and we set it to looping to make sure that it is continuously being called. From this we'll drag off, create an event, have custom event, we'll say periodic event. We leave this completely blank, so whenever you overload or create a child of this and you want it to have some functionality on the periodic event, you just type out this event and then add your code that you want to happen there and it just works. So this is just a placeholder for all of our children to have functionality essentially. After that we want to save the reference to this periodic event because we want to be able to manipulate this later. So we'll call this a periodic event, no periodic timer is better, uh, handle. So this will be a handle, let's see if we can get rid of the capital A, like so. So this will be our handle to this specific event. So if in case we want to, like this debuff or buff gets cleansed or removed in some way, we want to be able to like dismiss it easily. Uh, in case we want to. In addition to this, we also have another time that is of value and that is our duration. So we're going to be creating another set timer by event. This one will be taking the time of the duration in here, like so. This one will not be looping because this will be if we have for, as we have a default as a three second duration, this means what this is supposed to do is essentially end this status effect one, once this expires. So that's why we will be dragging off an event here, creating one and calling this one end status effect. So the end status effect is the, uh, the event that is called when a status effect is being removed. So it can either do it by being uh, timing out because of its duration, or if some outside influence is supposed to end it in some way. This as well, we want to promote to a variable and we want to have this one be called something like um, duration timer handle. So we have good descriptive names. Now a detail before we move on is if we expand this timer, I will explain a problem that can arise with this. So let's assume that we have a timer that this status effect lasts for three seconds and we have a periodic timer that lasts or is every one second. We start the timer event first here and then the duration afterwards. So in most cases it will probably be just fine. It will take after one second it will do its uh, poison damage, let's say. At second two it will do its poison damage. At second three it will do its poison damage. And then this event will happen and it will end its status effect and it will no longer exist anymore. However, there are certain conditions when you can run into a situation where you get sort of a race condition where it doesn't necessarily happen that this event triggers before this, especially if you have it exactly like three seconds and one second, because one second timed a certain amount of times will be exactly the same time as the ending of duration of the status effect. So what you can do to make it have just the tiniest of little headway to last longer, to make sure that the last tick here doesn't vanish and you don't get a poison damage, is to have an initial start delay. Now you can put something really small here like 0, 0, point, point, sorry, 0 0.001 for example. Now this will be a frame in most cases and that is enough to ensure that at least if you have an exact amount here for periodic event like one second it will not lose one of its ticks if it happens to end up just after the end status effect for example. So that's just a little side note. And once we have actually reached the point where we're going to be ending our status effect, 
we want to be doing a few things. We want to, first of all, be clearing our timers because we don't want them to be ticking anymore. So to do that a little bit clean, what we can do is we can create a function. We can call it clear timers. And in here, we can make use of our periodic handle and we can say clear and invalidate timer by handle. So, and after we've done that, we'll take the duration one. And we'll clear this one as well. From there, we just return because this function is now done. It does what it's supposed to do. So this will clean up all of our timers. We go back to our code and we add this function at end status effect. So now we have a part of our cleaning up process of our status effect. But there is more. Uh, we do know that we have a character that currently has this status effect on it and we want to make sure that it gets removed from it. So we will get owner and from owner we will get component by class And we want this to be of the BPC type status effect. And if we get one that is valid, we want to make sure to remove this from it. So we will say remove status effect. Like so. And status effect to remove here is going to be a reference to self. Now, here you can immediately see that, okay, well, this will only work as long as we have an owner. And yes, that is true. This is why it's important that we make sure that the status effect gets an owner when it's made. But in addition to that, it's important to realize who that owner is. Because if we are player A, let's say, and we're doing something to cause player B to get a status effect, we want the owner here to become the player the player B so that it removes this from player B's status effect when it's gone. So to demonstrate how this works, what we can do is we go to our third person character. Here we are uh, spawning a, a BP status effect. We want to make sure that this is the owner. Now in this case, we only have one character here, so we're actually going to be saving or saving. We're going to be sending ourselves. So self is going to be the owner here. Instigator would be the one who caused this. So even though the owner of the status effect is like a poison, we can still use the instigator to find out who caused the poison and who actually killed this character, for example, if it dies from the poison. So getting instigator controller, we can send that in here. No, we cannot. We need a pawn object reference. So in this case, since we are doing the damage and getting the damage, this will be the same one in this case, which is a little bit confusing, I suppose, but it will become more clear later on, I hope. Uh, like so. So now we have the whole flow here of, uh, let's see here, we go to our blueprint status effect. So actually we start with the character. So the character, in here we have some debug code saying, we spawn a status effect. We add the status effect to our blueprint component of status effects. Inside of our blueprint status effects, we have this add status effect. When we have a status effect added to our character, we will add it to our current array for status effects. We will make sure to tell anybody who's interested that we, we just got a status effect added to us. We then try to apply this application or we try to apply this status effect to us. Going into it, we now have a uh, attempt of application being run, which in this case is just, we haven't put any more code here for now, but we will be adding more here later. But here we would have conditions to see if we would be successfully attempting uh, the application. So we will go to starting the status effect. In this case, we will start a timer saying that we do whatever it's in the periodic part. And then we'll start a timer saying that we should end whenever the duration has ended. When the duration is ended, we will clear all the timers. We will get whoever is the owner. We will make sure to remove the status effect from its 
blueprint component for status effects, which will then be the remove status effect over here, which will remove it from the array and then call notification in case uh, someone is interested, essentially. So, so how do we test this then? Well, let's go create a child status effect. Let's do a child class. Let's call this BP underscore status effect underscore poison or something like that. So starting this or opening this up, we will not see a whole lot of stuff here. Uh, in fact, actually, if we close this down and open it again, we will see essentially the basics of what we have available to us. And that is status effect information here. So here are values that we could tweak if we wanted to. But we're go just going to be putting some very simple functionality in here. So what we will be doing is we will be removing tick and actor begin overlap. And you can see here that we have a begin play, for example, that's being called. But what we want to do is, let's say we want to have it tick damage for us on the, the tick interval. So not, not the tick event, but the interval that we created. So it was called something like periodic event. So here you can see that we have an event called periodic event that we can call on. Actually, that's not the one that we're after. We want periodic event, the one that says add event, periodic event. So this one is the event that we have in our parent class. Now, if we would have functionality there as well, we would have to call, or we wouldn't have to, but we could add a call to a parent function if we wanted to have the parent's functionality run first before we have some added functionality after. In this case, we don't have any functionality. We can just leave that one out. What we will be doing is we will be doing damage to us since we are the one who has the poison. So we will get owner and we will get a component by class and we will get of the type BPC attributes. So if we have an attribute here, we'll do a valid And we will make sure to change attributes on this one. So if we have a valid one, we can say we want to change our health with minus 10 to the base value, for example. And then we can create an origin here as well. So uh, make origin. The actor in this case is going to be the owner, the controller is going to be the instigator. All of these will be the same in this particular case because, well, that's what we sent in. So this information is being sent to our change attribute and hopefully now we should be able to have this poison effect on us. So we go back to our third person character and change from a status effect to a poison. And let's see what happens. We press nine key to have this happen. So let's increase that and we press the nine key. And you can see that our life is now ticking down and it ticked down three times and then it expired so it didn't continue ticking. So we can actually see that both the adding of the status effect, removing of the status effect and the functionality of the status effect all worked out there. So that's a good test, I think. And I think that might be a good position to stop for today. So I hope to see you in the next episode. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.